Okay, just some quick general principles about splinting. This is your splint cart, in case you don't know how to open up. There's this metal button here. A lot of the splint materials are on the inside. We have straight plaster in various widths um, here, and then on the other side are the rolls. If you like to use stockinettes, I personally don't, but many people do. The stockinettes are there. There's usually not scissors in here, so make sure you bring your own. Um, and I use plaster for everything. I do not use orthoglass for anything except the unstable open fracture that's getting ready to go into the operating room just for stabilization. I just hate orthoglass. Plaster is king. Um, inside the upper drawer then is where you're going to find the ace wraps and all the web roll. Um, often this is not stock, so you're going to want to make sure you have what you want um, for your particular patient. Um, one quick thing about measuring. Um, often you can just use whatever scrap piece of web roll is laying around. And an example for like a sugar tong splint, so you take it and put the end where you want it for a sugar tong right at the MCPs, and you're going to have the elbow already at 90 degrees, come back around the other side, and then this splint should stop proximal to the MCP there so things so that the fingers can flex. But you're always going to end up being shorter than you think you are. So I always give myself for a long splint that wraps around a major joint an extra couple of inches. If it's too long, you can always um, fold it back. But if it's too short, you're starting from scratch again. So now you've got your measurement mark. Some people like to tear it off because they're afraid this is going to fall on the floor and then you forgot and lost your mark. So now you know you want a splint material that's this long. We're just going to use this scrap piece for demonstration and then we're just going to start at one end, down the length to the other side, and then you're just going to flip over and keep going back and forth until you get your ten layers. Now usually you'll only get a few layers out of each one of these rolls all right, and the important thing that I like to mention is don't take this little scrap and bend it over in there and thinking that's really doing anything and then start short. That just makes this really too hard to work with. So whenever you run with a short piece like that, just tear it off and know that here you've got three measurements for an upper extremity. You're going to want ten, so it's going to take you three rolls plus an extra piece. Um, it's nice to just kind of have everything set up and ready for your splint. So you're going to need to pick your web roll size. You're going to want to get your ace wraps and get them out of the plastic container because it's easier to do now than it is when you're trying to do it with your hands are all wet. Um, back to measurement just for a bit. This is the pre-cut um, fiberglass that you'll find inside here. This is really nice for sugar tong splints and ulnar gutters. Um, anytime you need to use a lot of plaster when you need to go around a major joint, that's when you're going to be using the rolls rather than the pre-cut plaster. Um, again, really important to get everything set up, have it all ready for you before you're ready to go. Um, Make sure you have your bucket with water. I like to use hot water because I like it to set fast. Some people tell you to use cold water so you have plenty of time to mold. And lastly, don't take this plaster ridden water and dump it in any sink. Make sure you dump it only in a sink that has a plaster trap and that's in the utility room um, in between, right at the end of uh, team four sign. So between teams two and three by the team four hallway sign.